Welcome to an example on how to use the divergence theorem to evaluate a flux integral or the surface integral shown here, where the vector field F is given and the surface S is the solid bounded by the cylinder Y squared plus C squared equals 25 and the planes X equals negative four and X equals three. Let's first look at this graphically. The surface S is the surface that bounds the cylinder between these two yellow planes, which are X equals negative four and x equals three. And the vector field F is graphed in purple, and therefore the value of the flux integral will give us a net flow across the surface of this cylinder. Before we set this up though, let's review the divergence theorem. The divergence theorem states the total divergence of a vector field in a solid region V equals the total flow across the boundary surface S, where V must be a solid region bounded by S oriented by a unit normal vector directed outward, and the partial derivatives of the components of the vector field F must be continuous on V. So under these conditions, the flux integral, often expressed in one of these two forms, is equal to the triple integral over the region V of the divergence of the vector field F differential V, which can also be expressed in this form here. So this shows a relationship between a triple integral over a solid region and a surface integral over a surface. So going back to our example, looking at the vector field F and our formula, P equals three X Y squared, Q equals X E to the Z, and R equals E to the third. So let's go ahead and find these partial derivatives. So the partial of P with respect to X is equal to the derivative of three X Y squared with respect to X, that'd be three Y squared and the partial of Q with respect to Y is equal to the derivative of X times E to the power of Z with respect to Y, which would be zero, and the partial of R with respect to Z is equal to the derivative of Z to the third with respect to Z, which would be three Z squared, which means the given surface integral or a flux integral, again, often expressed as the double integral over the surface S of F dot n, differential s, is equal to the triple integral over the solid region V of the sum of the partial derivatives, which would be three y squared plus three z squared, differential V. And now because, and now because the surface S is a cylinder, it does make sense to use cylindrical coordinates but we need to be careful here though because notice how the cylinder is running along the x-axis and is bounded by x equals negative four and x equals three. So differential V is not going to be equal to R dz dr d theta, it's going to be equal to R dx dr d theta. Again, because the cylinder is running along the x-axis, not the z-axis. And that also means y squared plus c squared is equal to R squared. So this triple integral is equal to the triple integral of, well if we factor out three, we're going to have three times the quantity y squared plus c squared, which would be three r squared. Then again, differential v is equal to r dx dr d theta. The integration for x are going to be from negative four to three. We can use the yz trace if we need to, to help us find the limits integration for r and theta. The limits integration for r from zero to five, and for theta it's from zero to two pi. Let's go and evaluate this on the next slide. Well, of course we can write the integrand function here as three r cubed. So we first integrate with respect to x treating r as a constant, so we'd have three r cubed x, performing substitution for x. When x is three, we have three r cubed times three minus when r is negative four, we have three times r cubed times negative four. So we have nine r cubed plus twelve r cubed which gives us 21 r cubed.
And now we integrate with respect to r. So the antiderivative is going to be 21 times r to the fourth divided by four, or 21 fourths r to the fourth. Performing substitution for r, when r is five, we have 21 fourths times five to the fourth. And when r is zero, we have zero. This simplifies to 13,125 fourths d theta. And now we integrate the respect to theta. Performing substitution for theta, we're just going to have 13,125 divided by four times the quantity two pi minus zero. Of course, we have a common factor of two. So one, two, and two, and two twos and four. So the exact value of the flux integral is 13,125 pi divided by two, which is approximately 20,616.701. So going back to the graph, this value represents the total flow across the boundary surface S as well as the total divergence of the vector field in the solid region V. I hope you found this helpful.